So I guess your first impression is that this is a very boring website, right? There's nothing here, uh, but this is actually a website I've been working on for a while uh, that is pretty special if you ask me. And it's this idea that every single web page apps in the future could be personalized. So what I build here is that we can build any feature we want on this site. It's just an empty shell. So I want to start with, I want to see the real time Bitcoin price, green text, courier front, timestamps update each fifth minute, right? So we're just going to build a feature on our empty shell here. So you can see we are building this now. It's going to take a bit of a time because we have some backend processes I will explain soon. So I'm going to show you when this component is complete. Okay, so here you can see it. This loaded in now. This is our Bitcoin price tracker. You can see, yeah, perfect. This is using an API to actually fetch the real time Bitcoin price. And we got it in the style we wanted. But that's not it. I want more uh, things on my dashboard empty shell here, right? So I'm just going to follow up with a new feature. Cool. I also need a nice graph with the 24 hour movement of the Bitcoin price in a scale that shows movement. So let's try to build this feature, right? We can also collapse this to so just have our feature here. Okay, so now you can see we got the graph, right? That is pretty cool looking. So let me zoom. We can't really zoom in a bit. I have to change that. But you can see clearly see here. Here are the last 24 hours, right? And we got the correct prices. We can look at this and see the actual price too. So pretty cool. Uh, but we're not done yet. I want mon one more component here to kind of complete my Bitcoin checkup for today. Okay, awesome. Now I need to calculate to find the value of my Bitcoin in NOC. Allow float uh, numbers input. So we're just going to run that. And hopefully this will give us like a calculator that can turn my Bitcoin uh, into like Norwegian kroners from dollars, right? Okay, so now we can see we have our calculator here. So let me try to do 0 0.02. Okay, perfect. Now you can see what my value of my Bitcoin is in NOC, right? Uh, at least I think that's around correct. So you can see this is very flexible. I wouldn't, should I call it an app? Should I call it a website? I don't know. But this is my idea that every web pages or apps in the future is going to be very personalized. And you can basically build on the fly whatever feature you want. So let me just show you a bit on how the flow of this system works before we take a look at code and test a few more stuff, right? Okay, so here you can kind of see an overview of what the system uh, consists of. We have Claude 3.5 Sonnet New. We are using the Cloud Computer Use Tools. These are invaluable in the system. And we are generating the component that we just saw, right? So it all starts down here with a user that requests a feature uh, with a prompt. This could be changed in the future to voice or anything, but for now it's just a prompt. Uh, this is going to be sent to Cloud 3.5. It's going to write the React code. Uh, in this, we have a loop that kind of validates this code. If it's... Uh, uh, true, it goes on. If it's false, it goes back here and rewrites it before it can move on. And if this code is validated, uh, it kind of gets first. Uh, it's going to be checked by computer use to see if there are any like packages or dependencies we need to install. So that is going to be automated too using the bash command, I think. And it's going to uh, use the other cloud tool, the editor tool, to write the code to the correct front-end path so we can place it in a place where we want our components and when that is done uh, basically we can see the react component pop up on our page right and that is basically like the id of the system so the only thing we want to do manually is for the user of the page should be to request a feature and anything else is going to be automated right we're going to write the code validate the code install the packages and write the code or move the code to the correct placement to be able to render the component, right? So it's been interesting and it's been working pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, what kind of solved this for me was the Claude computer use tools that just came out. That made it much easier to do, uh, at least for my thinking. So I think we're gonna go look at the code a bit and then we're gonna have a few more examples I have in mind I wanna try out. Uh, yeah, let's just do it. So of course this project is full stack, so what's been super helpful for me are the courses over on today's sponsor, Scrimba. Are you looking to learn AI and coding, but you're tired of watching these endless tutorial videos? You should check out today's sponsor, Scrimba. Scrimba is an interactive coding platform that lets you pause and actually play with the code right in your browser. So you learn by doing, not just watching. Let's take a look at the platform, the courses, and how to interact with it. So here you can see we are on the courses pages. Here we have a bunch of different things to pick from, right? We have the front-end developer, the AI engineer path, which I really like. We have advanced JavaScript, TypeScript, 
but I like to sort by topics. So when I click on topics here, you can see React, JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML. I like the AI topic, of course. So I'm gonna click into that. Here I can scroll to all the courses that uh, Scrimba has on AI now. Uh, let's say I wanted to click on learn AI agents, right? Uh, so I can click into this and here you can see we get a bunch of different videos we can watch. So I just want to show you how this works now and how you can pause the video to interact with the code that the instructor is talking about. So now we actually get into the video part. So let's just listen for a bit and I'll show you how I can pause this and edit the code now and we can run it. I'm going to be listening for a message event and I'll have a second parameter which will be a function. And this function will get called every time there's a new message in the midst of this run functions. I guess. Okay, so I heard enough now. I want to kind of try it out myself, right? So this is a bit of an older model. So I want to change this to, let's say, GPT-40 Mini. I can do that. Good. Uh, I can look at the tools. This tools we are using. We want to get my location. We want to get the weather for this location. And now I can run this, right? And you can see we are running the functions. Did we get the answer? The current weather in Oslo. Perfect. And we got it, right? So this is what I like about Screenby is that you can also interact with the code. You can add your own API keys here in the environment. You can see I added my OpenAI API key. So it's a very interactive platform and it's very nice to learn this way if you ask me. So if you want to learn AI and coding in an interactive way, definitely go check out Scrimba. You can find a link in the description below. A big thanks to Scrimba for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the project. In this video, we're mostly going to focus on the AI part of the code. Uh, that is what I found most interesting, but uh, I might do like an upload or something on my members page uh, about how to interact with the front end parts and stuff too. Uh, but for this video, I think we're going to focus on the AI parts uh, that is pretty interesting in this case, if you ask me. So I just want to start with kind of the computer use agent we use here. So if we head over here, we can see we are using the client beta messages create. We are using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and this new version here. Uh, the tools we have listed here are the text editor and the bash tool. And these are kind of what enables me to install packages and all the things we need from our code, right? And that has been working super reliable, if you ask me. Uh, there were a few things we have to juggle around with to figure out, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, the one thing I struggled a bit with was actually to get the, the bash tool to actually go into our front end folder when installing the packages, right? Because those packages belong uh, on the front end side. So, uh, but that wasn't too hard, uh, but let's head over to the Claude handler. So this is kind of where we write our components. We have a feature called build feature, right? If you look at the system or the prompts here, right? We're going to create a React component for uh, the feature description that is com comes in from the user, right? And yeah, we have some good instructions here. So you can see a setup instruction, list each requirement. We're going to install packages. If this component requires any npm packages or setup, start your response with this. Because these commands will be executed in the frontend directory. Make sure to include all required packages. So I'm going to show you like in action here on the terminal how this works when we do like a request later. Uh, we have some requirements. It has to be TypeScript, Tailwind, React best practices. And I kind of set a standard size for the component because I wanted it to be to fit in into our web page, right? And yeah, it should be centered. We want to use a dark theme for all code. I found that was pretty nice. And yeah, you can both basically see all the requirements I set for this. Uh, validate component code. So this is also something I set up using just clip Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. You're a world-class code checker. Your task is to verify the code is complete, working React component. Verify all required imports are present. Verify the component meets the styling requirements. Uh, when I got this validator in, it kind of reduces all the wrong code we got. And it kind of got a boost in uh, valid code each time we run it. Uh, but I'm not going to spend too much time on this type of things. Because I kind of want to focus on how this works. And how the AI actually writes the code based on our instruction because it is pretty cool to watch this run in the terminal here. But if you are really interested in diving more into this, looking more in detail how the front end and back end connects and stuff, uh, I think I'm going to upload this to my members GitHub. Uh, I think I'm going to try that. And if you want to access, just become a member, follow the link in the description and all that stuff, right? 
Uh, but now I think we want to run a few more tests, create a few more components and actually watch how this operates down in the terminal here because I had a lot of prints so we can actually follow along what's happening. So yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so I want to show you one more thing. So you can see here are all uh, of our components now in code. So we have dynamic component 1, 2 and 3, right? Uh, yeah, you can see them here. So here is the code Claude wrote for each component. So what is pretty cool about this is that uh, I created this uh, X here so we can remove components like on the fly. I remove that, I remove that, I remove that and if you go to the code now you can see all of our dynamic components now are deleted. So we can just continue and start all over again right and that's it now we kind of go back to our flat non component shell right. Uh, but let's do like a new feature we want and we're gonna follow along in the terminal what's happening there when this system is creating the feature, right? So let's do, I want to display the top five headlines from Hacker News uh, in a green courier front with a link uh, terminal style. So when we click build feature now, let's head over to the terminal. So you can see the first thing is happening now that we are, uh, we are actually getting this uh, create a React component for. So here is our message, right? And uh, yeah, we go to the prompt here. The next step now is uh, gonna be to install the dependencies. So uh, we are executing the command npm install axios uh, force. Don't mind this force, this is because uh, we have React 19. So you can see we installed those packages. We installed, yeah, so everything looks good. Okay, so it seems I missed, I didn't see that, that the code was validated on the first attempt. So that was perfect, I kind of missed that. That means that our component should be up and running now, yeah. So you can see, top 5 Hacker News headlines. Uh, we have some links, do they work? Yes, that works. What about this one? Yeah, and let's go to Hacker News to actually confirm that these are the top 5 headlines. So, I'm not mutable, passport photos, automat. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so now we have this. That was one component we installed. Pretty easy to set up, pretty fast, and everything worked first time. So, that was super impressive, if you ask me. But I wanted to kind of check out the validator code thing. So, let's try uh, to write another feature to see if we actually can do some. Uh, yeah, rewriting of the code now. Okay, so let's try. I want to animate the text BTC using Framer Motion. That's called Framework. Make the text bounce, bounce around in the box. So let's try to build this feature. If we go back here now, you can see. Uh, okay, so we have our request. And we're probably going to try to install Framer Motion. And maybe some other packages. If the code is validated the first time. Okay, so we, <laughs> it was validated successfully again. Uh, we tried to install Framer Motion, that was a success. Uh, that should have been our component created, so let's go back here and refresh. Okay, so here you can see the BTC text is kind of bouncing around in this animation, right? So that worked out pretty good. And the difference is now that we can actually install a package that we needed for this code using the Claude tools. So that kind of changed it up for me because then we can create more advanced components, right? We can do something like I want to leave a rating on the product star system. So hopefully, let's say this site was selling something. And yeah, I want to leave a rating for this. I can just create that feature and leave that rating. Uh, so let's check out here now uh, if you have any issues. Uh, validated successfully. We installed React icons. Okay. Uh, that should be pretty much it. Let's uh, refresh. And we have our component. So we can pick stars. <laughs> so that was four stars. Okay. Three, four. Let's just uh, remove these components here now. Uh, I want to try something that uh, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be able to handle. So let me just think of something. Let's try to do a game. So let's do a tic-tac-toe game. I haven't tried that yet. Okay, that worked pretty good. So you can see, uh, do we get a winner? Uh, play again. Yeah, that worked. Uh, okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Uh, I want to do one more thing, then we can just wrap this up because uh, I think I kind of got the first step down here now. 
So the final thing I want to do is I want an interactive experience of the weather forecast the next three days in Oslo use my API key. So I want to see if it can take in the API key as like a request to use that and actually give us some results here. Okay, so this is what we got. So we got a drop down menu so we can select the day five uh, scattered clouds overcast light rain wasn't perfect, but at least it used my API key. That's what I wanted to check. So I wanted to know if I can paste in an API key here and it can take that and create something. Uh, wasn't half bad. It's okay, but it's a bit boring if you ask me. But yeah, uh, I think that's it for this today, to be honest. So uh, what I found interesting uh, about today was that this is kind of my first attempt at least to be able to use some kind of personalization. Uh, and... Uh, what made this possible for me was the cloud computer use tools. I think they are a bit underrated to be honest They are very powerful. Of course, you have to be careful with them and installing packages and stuff But uh, if you write a good prompt, I found out that it doesn't really go off the rails too much At least that's my experience. So I would play around with it if you are too scared Just use what I did in a previous video in uh, a virtual machine then you can just go wild right uh, but it is pretty interesting and I think I kind of tamed it and figured out how to use it now So it's gonna be interesting to see what we can do with these tools going forward and maybe open AI icons with similar tools soon uh, It is opening up uh, a new kind of way to think about personalized software if you ask me uh, Write the code on the fly uh, for the exact feature that you want. So I found this interesting uh, Like I said, I might do this on my members github if you want to play around with it uh, if not, uh, check out Scrimba, link in the description below. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Uh, and I'll see you again in a few days.